In the 1800s, people lived through a war like this, but it only lasted 38 minutes instead of five, 10 years. The war ended before news of it got anywhere, which had never happened before in history. Besides being the smallest war in history, the Anglo-Zanzibar War in Africa holds the record for being the world's shortest war. The longest war in history lasted over 70 years, and several wars lasted over 100 years. Even fewer people know that the shortest legal war in history only lasted 38 minutes. But the real question is which two countries fought this historic war called Anglo-Zanzibar and why it was decided in less than two hours. In the past, this island was part of a country called Zanzibar. It is in the Indian Ocean, just 40 kilometers from the coast of East Africa, which is now part of Tanzania. Oman used to be in charge of the Sultanate of Zanzibar and things were going well. Zanzibar's main source of income came from the very last slave market in the world, where people were bought and sold. Ropes brought slaves from the continent of Africa to Zanzibar Island. Often, slaves on the ship would jump into the Indian Ocean by releasing their ropes. Many of them got sick, and many of them died of suffocation on the less than 40 kilometers trip. The slave dealers were cruel and threw their bodies into the water. Within the slave market in Zanzibar, slave traders bought and sold them. Many hundred slaves were locked up in those small rooms with no food or airflow. Slaves were tied to trees and made to stand in a line. Their owners then beat them very hard. While they were being severely punished, if the slaves were incredibly strong by not crying or yelling, there were more charges. In Zanzibar, though, an influential community of people came together to stop the abuse through politics. Indeed, we're going to talk about Britain. Britain had been interested in the island of Zanzibar for a long time to abolish the slavery trend. However, the British couldn't make their plan to take over Zanzibar happen as long as it was part of the Omani Empire. In 1858, Sultan Majid bin Said took Zanzibar away from Oman and made it its own country. Before Majid bin Said's move, Zanzibar had been a part of Oman for many hundreds of years. Several Arab sultans denied recognizing Zanzibar as an independent country, but the British Empire had no better choice. So they put their hands on Majid bin Said's head immediately and recognized Zanzibar as a new country. In the end, the British Empire is now involved in politics here. After a lot of work and deals, the British put pressure on the Sultan of Zanzibar to close the slave market. The Sultan of Zanzibar shifted his primary source of earnings, which was the slave market, and most importantly, the British helped him do it. The slave market's ownership stayed the same, though. For the Sultan of Zanzibar, the British built a fancy palace right on the water. At that time, it was hard to think that this palace had everything the Sultan might have desired. More than anything else, this royal palace became the very first property in East Africa to have electricity wired up. These parts of the house were mostly made of wood and were linked together by a bridge. There was one thing that was clear. The British were getting a lot of power over Zanzibar. Ali bin Said, the new ruler of Zanzibar in 1890, decided that he would be completely pro-Britain. He made rules that Britain might determine what Zanzibar was allowed to trade, and Britain could change the rules for any future boss of Zanzibar. People got very angry when Britain told them what to do all the time. In 1893, when new ruler Hamad bin Duwani took over, they were very angry because he was basically a British instrument. Since there were conflicts in and around Zanzibar, the British government surrounded him with 1,000 troops in the British palace. This caused a lot of stress in the country and surrounding the palace, and that's when things started to go badly. Duwani died out of the blue at 11.40 a.m. on August 25, 1896. Of course, Britain had to agree to whoever would be the new master because of a rule made in 1890. 
After a couple of hours, a man called Khalid bin Bargash arrived at the palace. This person was Duwani's 29-year-old nephew, and some people still think that he killed his uncle to come into power. This guy moved into his property right away, without getting permission from the British government. The British picked Hamad bin Mohammed to be the new sultan, but when they found out about Khalid bin Bargash's plot, they sent a letter to his court threatening to leave by 9 a.m. on August 27th. After getting his army together, Khalid, the newly crowned Sultan of Zanzibar, locked him in the castle. He was told that British military ships were all around the island of Zanzibar as a threat. For the following two nights, it caused a lot of stress in the residence. At 8 o'clock in the early hours of August 27th, one hour before the deadline came to an end, the Sultan sent a word to the British consul, saying that he was ready to talk things out. The British consul told them, you can only negotiate if you do what we say. Another word from Khalid at 8.30 said that I had no plans to leave the throne of Zanzibar. The British probably won't be brave enough to fight us. The British consul responded that they didn't plan to attack either, but that didn't mean they couldn't. There were 2,800 guards outside the palace of Zanzibar at this time. These included civilians, palace guards, and plenty of the Sultan's own servants and slaves. There was also a tiny vessel named Glasgow that Queen Victoria had given as a gift, as well as two steam launches that were placed in the Indian Ocean outside the palace to fight the Royal Navy. At exactly 9.02, several ships from the British Navy smashed the palace. In one blow, the attack also destroyed the Sultan's royal ships. However, its upper part was not submerged because it was docked in a low-lying port. Under the British flag, the Glasgow crew gave up right away. The British Navy then intervened to save the crew of the Glasgow. It was the British's plan to capture Sultan Khalid bin Bargash. But during the initial stage of the attack, the Sultan and some of his friends ran away from the palace, leaving all of his loyal men and people behind. The heavy shelling claimed the lives of 500 soldiers from the Sultan's 2,800-man army. There was only one seriously hurt British officer on a British military ship, but he later got fine. The British Navy shot about 500 shells, 4,000 rounds from machine guns, and 1,000 rounds from rifles. The British soldiers entered the residence at 9.38, and the remaining members of the palace guards also gave up. Two minutes later, at 9.40 p.m., the British soldiers took down the Sultan's flag and flew the British flag on top of the palace. Following the 38-minute war, the British quickly took control of Zanzibar. It became an indirect British colony and remained unchanged under Sultan Hamad bin Mohammed. Over the next nine to ten years, the British released 17,000 Zanzibari slaves and got rid of all slave society on the island. What do you think about it? I hope you enjoyed this video and will share it with your friends. Thank you for watching it.